Oh, uh, okay. So, hello from Pause and Claws, and this is our Project 3 midterm presentation. Uh, so, currently, we are using Next.js in TypeScript for our front end and back end. We are using MongoDB as our database. We are using Tailwind CSS for styling component components, uh, and we are using ESLint and Prettier for our format. We have our wonderful developer team, uh, which has Amber, JD, Jason, Chris, Robin, Seth, and Stella. We have business analysts, Esther and Luca. UI designer and Evelyn, and we have our wonderful DevOps team as well. So currently we are looking at our uh, homepage, uh, and currently we have the functionality of these few functionalities. Uh, from, from the start, we can see there is a navigation bar, which supports not login and sign up. We have our banner. We have our search, uh, we have, we have our search. Search bar, which uh, supports like if uh, if a user wants to actually look for accommodation and they want to uh, look for accommodation which satisfies satisfies certain criteria, you can use uh, you can use the search bar. We also uh, provide uh, recommendations for accommodation, and we can also support uh, registering pets and properties for pet owners and property owners. And I'm going to give it to uh, Chris. Set. I'm going to describe the search bar which enables user to find the desired accommodation view filtering features. <clears throat> it consists with four filters. Firstly, user can find the desired accommodation by entering the city name. We use Google Map API to find the location. Then user can open the date range pick up drop down menu by click the dates button. We use dates library to build a custom date range picker. By setting the check-in and check-out day, user can get the day range, then update the day, update the static day range on the search bar by click the continue button. <clears throat> the next are the guesses and pass filters. They are very similar. One is for providing the number of adults and children hope to stay in the accommodation. The other is for the pass. Uh, can you please go to the next slide? Um, <clears throat> This is what the search bar looks like after applying some filters to improve the user experience. We have the reset filter button behind each active filter. Once user click the button, the specific filter will be removed. We use a custom hook to improve user experience. There is a use outside click hook applied to each drop-down menu. Uh, <clears throat> user just need to click anywhere outside of content to close the menu. We also apply to the other features like the purple window. Um, in the future, we want to reflect the uh, filtering feature to the URL for improve uh, user engagement. Next, uh, Robin will talk about the sign up and login features. Thank you, Chris. For the user sign up page, we have implemented two distinct sign up features using TypeScript, categorizing two different user groups, pass owners seeking accommodation and the accommodation providers. The users can begin by selecting their user type on the design page. Depending on their selections, they are directed into the respective sign-up page to their needs. Users on both sign-up pages provide essential information like username, email, and password. This data is securely transmitted to the server for validation. After successful registration, users will receive a confirmation message, and then the server will generate a JSON Web Token for future authentication. The JWT is securely stored in the client's browser for subsequent sections. After registrations, users will be redirected to their home pages for further explorations. Regular explorations are employed to validate user input data on the front end, ensuring its correctness before submission. Upon user inputs, the data undergoes rigorous validation to meet specific criteria. For instance, if a username already exists within the system, the insertion of duplicated data is prevented. For user login pages, we use actuals to pass username and a password from client to the server for login users. When the user successfully logs in, the server will return a data object containing the user's name and the token. Moreover, we use a reductive toolkit, toolkit to create a slice for setting the information of, and of the authentication users and store the user information and the tokens in the local storage. This section focuses on the front end implementation for resetting passwords. Users can initiate the password reset process by entering their email address. The front-end validation ensures the correctness of the email formats and other details. Upon successful validation, a confirmation link is sent to the user's email address to confirm the account. Upon confirmation, users are redirected to the password reset page, where they can enter and confirm their new password. Front-end validation ensures the password formats and the contents meet the required criteria. 
If any errors occur, users are promptly notified, preventing submission until all errors are resolved. Once the password format is correct, users can submit their new password to the initiate the reset process. After successful logging, clicking on the user information in the upper right corner triggers the display of a drop-down menu. Upon clicking profiles, the user is redirected to the user details page to complete the routes. Upon logging completions, the user's information is displayed in the right corner. Clicking on the user information triggers the appearance of a drop-down menu, providing access to various user-related options. Selecting profile from the drop-downs will initiate the routing process, redirecting the users to the user detail page. The user details um, page displays the comprehensive information about the login users, enabling them to manage their profile and account settings effectively. This front-end feature enhances user accessibility and navigations, providing a seamless transition to the user detail page for the profile management. Next, please. Okay, so I am going to elaborate on the comprehensive information and profile management. So in our homepage, we have our registration banner, which uh, asks the user, the new user, whether he or she is a pet lover or a pet loving hotel owner. Uh, they have to decide whether they are a pet owner or a host. When the user actually clicks the button, they will be redirected to the pet registration page or host registration page. We also support profile management for both sides of the users. Personal information can be retrieved from the database uh, and updated when they choose to edit their personal profile. On the left side of the user information page is the navigation bar with the default personal info options. Um, and for hosts, we have another separate set because it is a different, uh, because hotel owners are a different kind of user. We have a different set of pro uh, profile information and they can also, they should have another set of contact information as well. For pet owners, we support pet registration so they can actually add their pet into the database. And so we can con consider, uh, consider a more convenient, uh, convenient registration and booking process when the pet owner actually wants to get a, a accommodation. They can choose, uh, they can choose their pet type, their pet breed and their pet gender, their pet name. They can also upload photos if they want to to our database. Um, so, um, pet information can be demonstrated in the front end after retrieving the related data from the database. And if, um, and if they want to add a pet, they can do so in the pre, uh, as, as it was said in the previous page. Um, so currently we, ha we have a similar functionality for the user profile for hosts and, and instead of pets, they have properties. Um, they can actually view and edit in their property information. And if, if they want to add an, an accommodation, they can do so with a similar process, but with a much more complicated registration page. Uh, I'm going to give it to our DevOps. So, so for the DevOps, so we, uh, what we have done for the CICD, so we built our flow on the GitHub actions. So as long as a new code update to the GitHub, the GitHub action which triggers to run and then send the code to the ECR, including environment variables in task definitions. And the AWS service will build at the same time, which includes ECS, task definition, and parameter store, etc. Once the code is sent to the ECR, the ECS will generate the task definition to build the website uh, for the bar gate. So currently what we're doing is so we, we just build the uh, infrastructure as code in, in Terraform. So, uh, in with the structures that I mentioned we previously, so, uh, but also building the cloud front and the S3 buckets. Also at the back end, we will produce, we will build the UAD and PLD environment for the different stage for the deployment in which contain, uh, public sub, uh, submit and private submit in different availability zone. So, 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 uh, for the difficulties what we're having, so during the productions, we have the, uh, uh, for the difficulties of AM and assignment and some services on AWS is necessary to communicate each other with the authorizations. So we are trying to deliver environment variables to a GitHub action and the ECR to build the next JS applications by the test definitions. But the website returned an error that environment variables were not defined and, and the problem cannot be seen on the information on the task definitions and GitHub actions and even the Docker image. So eventually we found that the test dimension didn't have the permission to get access to the parameter from promise store. So we assigned a policy for the task definitions. And so at this environment, we are facing the issue of building the new overflow CI CD. So that next JS, even though 
separated into the front end and back end. Both things are stored in the same folder and the implementation of the front end and the back end are a little bit different from what we used to and a little bit difficult. So the communication between front end and back end is used to avoid uh, API, which means that both ends are William Sue or testing are built with different containers or terminals from a different folder. So we don't know how to realize the front end pipeline and the back end pipeline separately with the code integrated in the same folder. So that's all the devil sections and that's the end of the presentation. Is the end of the presentation?